Is not live. Just one. Did you go? Yeah. Uh, welcome to your mechanics YouTube live stream. Um, my name is Keith. Um, I am a master technician on the operations team here at your mechanic. And with me is I'm Spencer, one of the operations coordinators. I, uh, I'm a judge in the West region. Uh, and my name is Moz. I'm a product manager and I help um, work on the mechanic after the new guys. Today. today we're going to be going over a couple things. Uh, first, we're going to be going over optimizing your account uh, so you can make more money and more uh, production. Uh, second thing we're going over is documentation, uh, basically going over your notes and your pictures. Uh, third thing is going to be our AC launch for summer, and then uh, product update with uh, Mel's, and then uh, any other questions in the next session. Uh, so first, we'll go into how to optimize your account. Um, first thing we'll, we'll touch base on is uh, your skill level. Uh, as you know, all of our jobs are tied with a minimum skill level that is required in order to be eligible for that job. Uh, as, as you uh, work over time, uh, we can fetch you increase your skill level based on your performance and everything like that. Um, and obviously, the higher skill level you have, more jobs you're eligible for. It also increases your base pay over time as you uh, do more, complete more hours on the platform. Um, so two ways to upgrade your skill level, um, you can request it through the application. Uh, if you're going from a JD to a JD, uh, you will need to have completed 400 hours uh, on the platform, uh, or if you want to get automatically approved, you can get your A1, A4, A5, A6, and A8 ASEs. I uh, believe that is listed in the app, if not, we can uh, definitely let you know, uh, send that out to you guys if you're curious which one exactly. Um, the AASE is just kind of, you know, help support the fact that you've done your research, you've studied up enough, you know, you know how, the, how the parties work um, and, and what's involved with, with preparing them. Uh, now going from a JD to an MD, um, you will need to have completed 800 hours as a JD technician, or if you get all A1 through A8 ACs and become master certified, you can automatically move you up to an MD. And one of those things on that also, um, the A1 through A8s for your uh, master technician status or your JD status. Um, you can submit those uh, to Mac Ops right from ASC so we don't have to get a copy of your certificate. The other thing is um, if you do go by the hours and not the ASC certification, uh, we do have to uh, do another skills assessment or skills reassessment with you. So just go ahead and uh, when you do that uh, update, uh, request a skills reassessment from your. Uh, uh, and if you're curious how many hours you've completed in the uh, or on the platform so far, uh, in your app, go to dashboard and it'll list your completed uh, hours right there. So you can kind of track your progress and see uh, how close you are to, to get to that next uh, threshold. Um, now, in order to request a skill upgrade, just go into the app, uh, go to menu, skills and tools, and then there's the skills section there. So just click on that. And then that's broken up by all the different names. So US, Asian, European. Click on uh, you know whichever ones you want to you know look at, and then you can just adjust them as you'd like to. It'll tell you it's in review. That means your request has been submitted, uh, and then just wait for us to follow up with you on that. Uh, we'll get in touch with you and let you know uh, if we can proceed with that or not. Now the next thing uh, is managing your calendar. Um, obviously, you know you want to put on you know as many hours of availability as you can um, in order to make as much as possible. Um, the best best thing to do is, you know, we do recommend having about six hour gaps. It gives your customers plenty of flexibility in scheduling with you and also gives you flexibility in terms of the labor times, you know, you can get a, a five hour job. Um, if you don't have too much time, then at least three hours is recommended. So you can at least get some break jobs and you know, some other kind of like, you know, two, two and a half hour jobs scheduled in there. Um, obviously, if you put availability up, you want to make sure that you are actually available to take jobs. Um, that way you don't have to reschedule or potentially cancel. Um, it, it's just, you know, it's not good for the business in general, not good for your business as well. Um, and you want to make sure as well that you have large gaps. Uh, so if you have six hours, it's six, six hours straight. It's not broken up into two, three hour sections. Again, that just limits, you know, the, uh, the jobs you can get in terms of when customers can schedule you um, and in terms of the length of the job. Um, and of course, too, you know, if you're a little bit slow throughout the week, you can Test out adding a weekend availability. 
Um, in certain areas, might not have as much coverage over the weekend, so that's more jobs that you would then be open to, um, you know, if other types are covering the weekends uh, in your area. Uh, next thing is service area. Uh, obviously, having a bigger service area increases the amount of customers that you are eligible to be booked with. Um, it does increase travel time, of course, um, but we can definitely help you uh, look for busy areas that are probably close by to you. Uh, so it doesn't increase your travel time a lot, but I can help you know, you know hundreds more customers uh, just by adding one or two zip codes. Uh, definitely get a hold of your, your operations coordinators if you're curious uh, and are you looking to adjust the service area. Uh, we have a lot of zip codes that don't have quite as much coverage. We can slot you in there, and it's a really big boost to your business and, and how many tokens you're eligible for. Um, and then last but not least is customer service uh, slash repeat work and referrals. Uh, word of mouth goes a really long way. Uh, if your customer loves you, they're going to tell all their friends, um, and that's just an easy way for you to get more work coming your way. So obviously, you know, spend time with your customer, explain what you're doing um, for that service before you start. You know, you want to verify their complaint, go over exactly what you're going to be doing, make sure that it aligns with what they're looking, you know, for you to do. Um, and then, of course, afterwards, you know, go over the service and any recommendations um, that you may have. Going and, they, for and they hit on that point. Um, here's one of the things that, that is a good follow through with your customers. If you do recommended services and the customers available for you to show for them. They are there they can show them the services, take some time with them, point out the areas of concern, and then follow it up on your documentation and your recommendations with pictures. So that way, if they have to, let's say the wife is there and she needs to say, I need to talk with my husband about it, that way there's documentation there. They can both go over it, or they can later on go over it together and see what exactly we recommend. And include in that um, an estimate. Um, they know what needs to be done. They know how much it's going to cost. They can even plan for it. We look at that day. Um, all those are available on the app, and those are very good follow-up services for uh, you to get uh, additional work. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, a couple things that um, you know before and after the appointment. It's always good to check in with your customer. So you know, as soon as you see something scheduled, you can send them an introductory note. You know, introduce yourself. Hey, I'm, I'm with your mechanic. Please let me know if you have any questions. Really good way to kind of start that you know relationship and build a good rapport with the customer. You know, right from the get go before you've even gone out there and, and met them and seen their vehicle. After the appointment, we always recommend sending out your pro page. Um, you can actually find that link in the app. Uh, I believe it's under garage uh, or make more money. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but uh, feel free to uh, ask your operations coordinators if you want if you want to copy that link. We're happy to send that out to you. But just drop that in a note on the case. The customer will then be able to view that. Um, and that's a really easy way for them to rebook directly with you. Um, when they go to that link, they can only book with you. They don't see your availability. You can't book with other technicians. So send that out as much as possible. Really, really helps you get you know return business and repeat work. It helps keep you busy. Um, and then of course, documentation goes a really long way. Your notes and photos and everything just really helps to explain to the customer why they need X service. Um, so absolutely, you know, make sure every one has good detailed documentation uh, so that the you know, customer will feel more comfortable with your recommendations that are then more likely to help you. Um, one big thing, and part of the master tech team here that we do is we actually go over case review. Um, we verify that certain things are followed in the, in the setup and uh, delivery of when you do a job. One of the biggest problems that we have, I don't want to say it's a problem, it's more of a um, Lack of knowledge um, on your, on the technicians' parts because they might not know what we expect. So what we what we request to do, and this is going to fall under Mal's uh, product update here a little bit. But what we expect to do is when we document um, your cases with uh, pictures, voice notes, and text notes, key documentation for us allows us to stand behind your work. Um, it allows us for you to sell additional services. And it also allows us, if there's an issue with the job and we have to call in with the master tech for assistance, we can physically go in and look at your pictures live. So I want to go over a couple things that we'd like to see. Um, and a lot of cases that we see when we have issues, these are what this is what is lacking in those cases. So when you first get to the job, we want to see um, five different pictures, actually six pictures. So the first one's going to be we want to see the license plate. Want to see all four uh, pictures of around the vehicle, no key, any damage. Um, that 
that way if the Tesla comes back and says, hey, you just crashed my vehicle. Well, actually, those are time stamps. So we know that those were looked at before you start on Second thing is we want you to open the door, take a picture of the bin. Now, if you're going to take a picture of the bin with the project, it would actually fills in all that stuff. So we're trying to make it easier and more uh, efficient to do these uh, type of photographs. The next one we're going to take is the vehicle running with the dashboard already going through the ball shaft. That way we can determine if it has any check in light for one light before we start working on the vehicle. It's also going to notate your in mileage. Now, there are some other pictures that we'd like to take. Once you get the vehicle running, you look at your dog and you know what you're going to do. Let's say it's a water pump. I always use this in my skill assessment calls because it kind of explains the process fairly easy. We want you to take three photos. We want to take a picture of the water pump beforehand and the whole engine part. That way we can see if there's any damage before. Second one we want to see is the water pump removed with the ball with the block crash and ready to go back together. The third one we want to see is the, is the water pump installed and the final product. So a picture of the whole engine with it running and go from there. Next picture is we want to see, let's say you have a recommendation. Now this goes into the, what Spencer was saying earlier with follow-up. Any recommendation that we make, it is a much easier sell to the customer if they can see the physical damage. Okay. If you make a note of you know, dirty transmissions, you know, it's, it's brown. Now again, we all like the service transmissions, but it's still very difficult to do it. But the question is, is that we want to take pictures of these uh, particular items that we're recommending for service. It shows the customer that we care. It shows them that you put the time, and it will also increase those sales. Um, and last but not least, um, we want to go out photos. If you test drive the vehicle, and during the test drive, um, you know, I tell all my guys, test drive the vehicle, even if you do a model change, drive it for a mile, you're able to see what you actually see on the test drive and what you'll see on the vehicle static. So if it has a pulsation in the brakes, strut that's bad, uh, a noise in the rear end. I mean, there's numerous things that you can find during the test drive. Not only are we verifying that the repair that we did was correct, but we're, ver we're also looking for those recommended services. So based on that, documentation is key. One, the customer informed of what we're doing. Two, to make the availability for information. Three, us to stand behind your work if something goes bad. If you see that everything is done and it's done properly, I have more of a chance of standing behind the work and get a picture of you. The documentation that comes in, whether it's two photos or very small ones. And we'll on to uh, AC readiness. You want to start that uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, summer's coming around, I'm sure you know. Uh, it's been raining a bit, but it should uh, start drying out pretty soon here. Um, so, we want to make sure everyone's equipped for AC. Um, this is a heads up. Last year, techs who were enabled for AC and, and, and equipped, they made on average about 4,000 more uh, in summer months compared to technicians who weren't. Um, so, huge, huge uplift to your business again. Um, it's a really uh, good investment over time. Um, I, I know a lot of people think, you know, AC uh, recovery machine is, you know, four or $5,000. We've actually found one on uh, Amazon that's only about 400, the Robin Air RG3. Um, and very highly rated from our master technicians. Um, and it's a really mobile or a small unit. You can take it with you mobily. Um, and uh, once you have it, it'll easily pay itself off with just a couple jobs. And then you're equipped, you know, for years um, to then uh, you know, take all the AC work. So, one thing about uh, AC obviously, um, we require you to have your EPA 609, which is, is easily obtained through Max, ASE, a number of different uh, outlets. It's a one time fee if you don't have it, you can go ahead and get it. It costs $20 to do. Um, technical difficulty, sorry about that. <laughs> so, um, well, like I said, uh, EPA 609 is a requirement. The other thing that's a requirement that you do have a recovery machine. It means not only do we have a vacuum pump, but we have a basically a suite of tools that would require each technician to have to do AC. That way we're in compliance with the EPA laws. Um, you are, as a technician, when you go in and purchase refrigerant, um, you're the in, uh, user or the in provider of it. Uh, you guys follow your license, so there's no requirements. Here's the thing. AC is huge. Um, we want you to be able to maximize that potential. Um, the amount of labor hours you're going into an AC job, you're doing correctly on average, five to seven flat rate hours. That is a 
use in for you guys. Um, one thing we also require is that your JV level or higher. Um, that way you're capable of doing the job and you have some experience in it. With the finance program, um, we want you to contact NECOPS. Um, they have a program built up. If you don't have some time and you have a good track record, we'll finance your all of your AC tools for you and break it up over It's an awesome opportunity to get tools that normally most technicians can't afford. So uh, definitely get over back off with that. Let's get started on AC season and make it a bit off the one for one. Yeah, so um, as I said, my name is Moz and I'm a product manager here at uh, UMK. I uh, worked on a number of items, including uh, mechanic app. And so um, a few days ago, we released a new update to the mechanic app um, that all of you uh, should have already seen as you went through uh, the appointment flow. Um, some pretty big changes, and so I wanted to cover those changes and kind of explain um, what the changes are and why we made them. Um, so in just one second, we're going to share uh, some screenshots and kind of go through the changes. Um, so just give us one second if we uh, share. So, um, kind of going, uh, continuing with the theme of documentation, um, the changes that we made are really trying to uh, improve and make it easier for uh, for you as mechanics in the field to um, to make documentation a little easier. And uh, we've gotten some feedback that um, the changes seem to be a little slower, um, but I want to kind of explain uh, explain the changes and um, kind of make it a little bit easier to understand. Um, why this actually is going to be a lot easier in the long run. Um, I think we're having uh, just a little bit of difficulty uh, getting the screenshots up, but um, let's give us one second. Um, so I'll actually start explaining um, while we get the screenshots up. But essentially, the, the changes that we made um, can be kind of be split into two, two different parts. Uh, the first one is the pre appointment checklist, which uh, you should see as you open. Uh, your work order page, um, and it basically lists out a number of items. And these the items are actually, um, all but one of them are not new to the appointment flow. Um, and those items are parts pickup, um, letting the customer, letting a uh, customer know that you're on your way, uh, sending them that message, uh, checking in when you arrive at an appointment, um, pre authorization of payments, as well as the intake flow. So um, aside from the intake flow, all those are items that you've actually already been doing. Um, but the reason why we wanted to surface these um, kind of more prominently in the app um, is for a few reasons. One is um, the parts pickup is now front and center. And um, whereas before it was, uh, you had to uh, identify which parts you picked up through the parts tab or um, the parts section of the work order page, um, we wanted to really emphasize that letting us know that you picked up parts and which parts right you picked up uh, is really important. Um, not just for us on the business end, but also for you on the parts we're trying So when you let us know which parts you picked up and which ones you didn't, um, it allows us to know which parts we then expect or don't expect you to return in the event that um, certain parts don't get used or don't get um, Especially if there's a situation where you go pick up part um, and a part that you were supposed to pick up is wrong. Um, and so that's a kind of a perfect situation where, where
Sorry about the technical difficulty. Uh, we had a computer freeze. Um, not sure exactly where we cut out, so I'm just going to recap a little bit from the beginning. Um, so, what I want to cover is um, the last uh, mechanic app release that we uh, put out a few days ago um, and talk about a couple of the changes that we made. Um, the two major changes that we made um, have to do with the pre appointment checklist, which you should see. Um, kind of front and center on the work order page. Um, and then the second one is the, uh, kind of more specifically within the pre appointment checklist is the intake flow. Um, so what you should see right now on your screen is a screenshot of the pre appointment checklist. Um, and uh, as you'll see, there's uh, a number of items, um, most of which should, uh, there we go, should be on right now. Um, so on the pre appointment checklist, we have um, the ability to upload a parts receipt, um, share the message with the customer, letting them know that you're on their way, on your way, um, and then being able to check in, as well as go through the vehicle intake, um, and lastly, pre-authorizing the payment. So um, all the items but the vehicle intake should seem pretty familiar because you should be doing these already. Um, but we wanted to surface these, uh, you know, front and center in the work order page to make sure that um, you know. Mechanics in the field are, are conducting these um, more often, and uh, and the reason being is that each one of these items um, has kind of a different piece, uh, has a different importance. Um, very specifically, the parts pickup is something that we're seeing not happen as often as we'd like, and uh, letting us know that you picked up parts, and more specifically, which parts you have picked up, is really important. Uh, not just from the business end on our end, but um, more importantly on your end, so that we know. Uh, which parts you're using um, and which parts we expect you to return in the event that you don't use them. Um, and you know, more specifically, the situation where this is most important is when you're going to pick up parts and the part that you're picking up is actually the wrong part or maybe it's not available. Um, and so if you let us know that this is the wrong part and you didn't pick it up, we know that uh, you, know, you shouldn't be charged for it or the customer shouldn't be charged for it and you won't have to then be responsible for returning it. Um, and so uh, again, it's really important that you, every appointment, make sure that you mark that the parts have been picked up and which ones that haven't been picked up. Um, the on my way and check-in uh, messages are really important because it provides a much better experience for the customer who's not really sure when and where you might be when you're arriving. And so keeping them updated by sending them these messages um, really makes them feel included and makes them feel part of the process and just kind of gives them a, a heads up as to where you are. Um, now the last or the second to last item, which is the vehicle intake, um, is the new item, which we'll go into more specifically. Um, but the idea behind the vehicle intake is to make it easier for you to intake a car um, upon arrival at an appointment. Um, very much the same way that when a car is taken to a shop or a dealership, um, there's a number of pieces of documentation that are taken about your car um, that help uh, kind of sort out any details, any issues, as well as um, you know provide documentation to the customer if there's any issues, um, as I think if there's any damage to the car. Um, one, one thing, that, um, and I'll make a note on the vehicle intake. Here's the thing. Um, we are 50 different states we operate in, and what we want to do is um, California traditionally has always been a forerunner in consumer rights, and they've created a model of intake, of documentation, and everything else. Obviously, a lot of you guys are not in California. But just like a car that's 49 state compliant or 50 state compliant, we want to be compliant across the U.S. So we use the California model because it does cover every other state as far as documentation that each state requires. Some states are a little bit less, some states are a little bit more. But California it seems to be the model that everybody uh, goes after if there's an issue. Remember, just because you don't have a licensing authority in your state does not mean you don't have an attorney general. And with that in mind, remember, documentation, vehicle intake, all these different items are crucial if there's ever an issue with the customer. And that's all we're trying to do is protect the mechanic and YM if there's any ever an issue. So just remember that, just because it doesn't look similar to what you use in your own state, we are making it so it's 50 state compliant. Yeah. Um, so again, the reason why we want to put this so front and center is because we want to make sure that you all take care of each one of these different pre-appointment checklist steps for every appointment. And when you do that, it actually makes uh, your lives a lot easier in the long run and 
us as well. Um, and if in the event there's a need for a service fee payout, um, doing the pre-appointment checklist and completing it actually makes it a lot easier for us to you know, verify everything and make sure that uh, you know, everything was done according to the requirements um, so that we can actually pay out that fee a lot easier. Um, so diving more into the vehicle intake. Um, the vehicle intake is really uh, supposed to make your lives a lot easier uh, from a documentation perspective. Um, and so we'll switch over to um, the screenshot of the vehicle intake. Um, one second. Uh, so the vehicle intake, uh, again, shouldn't be all too uh, different from what you're used to, um, especially from the shop. Uh, and the idea here is to make sure that you take all the, docu the necessary documentation before you actually start working on a car. Um, now, I'm not going to go through each one of the steps and show you the flow, because um, you should be able to do that at your next appointment if you haven't already. But um, within the VIN uh, step, um, what we've done is we've now kind of in incorporated a more uh, a bigger focus on scanning the VIN. And what this allows us to do is scan the VIN and at the same time take a picture. And this way, you don't have to verify the VIN at one point and then later in the tasks have to take a picture separately. We're trying to combine those steps together. Um, now what it also allows us to do is make sure that uh, you are actually addressing and working in the right point. Because if we have you scan the VIN and we notice that it's a different vehicle or a different VIN than what's on file, We'll present to you an option saying, hey, uh, this is not the right vehicle. Um, are you sure that you want to proceed? And it gives you the opportunity to get back out and go to the right appointment or update the vehicle details in the event that the customer may have inputted the correct details. Correct me if I'm wrong, but on your on the VIN scan, it not only does the barcode, but it also reads the text on the VIN, so it's able to be code off. Correct. Yeah, so if you have a sticker that is on the door panel that's kind of dirty or dinged or you know falling apart, you can always go up to the windshield, and take a picture of the VIN, it'll, it'll actually look at the numbers. And sometimes there's a reflection, you know, it's not a perfect science, but we're not only not only looking for the barcode, but some older vehicles we know don't have barcodes, but they always do have the VIN actually there, so it can actually read and transfer the text to the app. Yeah, now, as you mentioned, um, with the windshield, it can be a little difficult because of the glare. So ideally, you do take a picture of the sticker, um, but it doesn't actually matter whether there is a barcode or not. It will read text if the text is there. Um, and so, or if there's another place on the car that the VIN is present, you'll be able to take a, a picture of that as well or scan that as well. So, reminder that you can scan the barcode or you can scan the text itself. Um, and again, we'll take a picture at the same time so that you don't have to take a picture later on. Uh, the odometer in, um, although it doesn't scan, um, you do try to make it a little bit easier again so that you take a picture and then record the odometer in reading. Um, that way you don't have to do them separately uh, you know, before and during the task list. Um, now, one thing that uh, we've heard some feedback on already is um, a request for adding an option um, in the event that the car is not starting and the odometer is not uh, readable. Um, so very soon in the next uh, update or two, we'll actually be adding an option for you to recognize or uh, let us know that, hey, I can't actually read the VIN um, for whatever reason. Either it's incorrect or because the car's not starting. Um, so we'll, we'll be adding that in uh, very soon. Uh, the third step, which is the license plate step. Um, this is fairly new in terms of needing uh, to take a picture of the license plate. But again, this just kind of uh, makes the entire intake flow a little bit more complete and gives us all the proper documentation. Um, also, this can uh, uncover and um, show us any issues with regards to a mismatch between license plates and VIN. Um, this doesn't happen as much on the consumer side, um, but we have seen this happen on the uh, fleet side of things. Um, and so uh, having the full documentation as to what the VIN is and what the license plate is just makes it a lot easier, as Keith said, to, for us to, to back up your work. Um, now, the last step is the vehicle damage step. Again, this isn't new. We've had vehicle damage uh, requests from vehicle damage photos in the past um, in the task list, uh, but we feel that it's really important to take those photos up front. Again, this is for a liability uh, perspective, so that when you show up, you get the keys from the customer, you do the entire intake flow, you take the pictures of the damage, and that way, before you even start working on the car, everything's documented. I do one note to that also. 
here's the thing with visual damage. If you know the areas of the car you're working on, let's say you're doing something under the hood, you know that you're going to have to lean over the fender. Take a picture of that area if there are scratches in that area. Those are going to be a little bit more close up. You're going to be able to see them better, and the customer is going to look at the areas you work on. If there's a dent in the rear bumper, obviously we want to notate it, but if you're nowhere near the rear bumper or anything like that, it's, it's still important, but not as important as that fender that you lean over and say, hey, you know, oh, you scratched it after you worked on my car. Or that wheel that you take off on an alloy wheel, and the customer says, well, look, there's, there's damage to it now. If you know you're going to be working on that particular area of the car, take a little bit more notice and take a little bit more time just to, you know, go over and make sure there's no existing damages. Yeah. And again, taking a few more photos of the front goes a long way, not just for your liability's sake, but also for the customer's uh, perspective. When they get that report after an appointment and they see, you know, 15, 20 photos of their car, it just gives them a little more peace of mind that you're acting as a professional mechanic and providing the proper documents. Um, now, I just want to reiterate one more thing. All the pictures that you take and all the information that you provide during the vehicle intake is saved and is not then again required during the task list portion of the appointment. So the VIN sticker, odometer in, license plate, and any damage photos, those are all maintained and saved in the photos bucket. And you do not need to retake those again. One thing I want to add to that, if this is going to prevent, if you forget, not going to skip a step. Okay. Um, one thing that we do see a lot of times is that we have photos that are not quite to the vehicle they're supposed to be. They just take a blank photo and put it in there. We don't want to see that. We want the actual photo. So it's just a reminder step of what, what we have there. Yeah. And uh, as Keith was mentioning before, and also Spencer, um, your business is not only for new customers, but also for repeat customers. The more documentation, the more photos, better it looks on your end. And so when the customer is receiving that report afterwards and deciding whether they want to you know, rehire you to take care of some more work, seeing all that, all those photos and all that documentation properly put together makes a huge impact. And that's actually one thing that really separates us from many other shops. It will just give you a receipt at the end with nothing more than just some scribbles of some uh, of the pricing of the work that we've done. We provide that full report, which really just, like I said, sets us apart from all and many other uh, other shops and dealerships. So um, that's about it for the uh, app update. Um, we will be putting out more updates in the next few weeks with more changes. Uh, but now we're going to move on to some questions that uh, have been coming in throughout the uh, YouTube live. Um, so I'll start with the first one. Uh, first question is, is your mechanic working on an app for the consumer side? Um, so we actually used to have uh, an iOS app. Um, unfortunately, there was enough changes on our end that we needed to uh, take that off the store. Um, and as at the moment, we don't have any plans for a release date of a new version, um, but there, there will be one in the future. Um, we're just not exactly sure when, when that will be. Um, but we do recognize the importance um, of having an app for consumers um, and how much easier it is for a consumer to be able to book appointments as well as just view all of their um, previous appointments and, and maintain their um, and uh, let's see. Um, yeah. Um, uh, if you guys have any other questions about the pre-appointment checklist, get a hold of Mech Ops. Um, we're more than happy to go over anything with you guys. Is there anything that, that wasn't covered or anything you're unsure of? Yeah. So, um, so the next question is exactly how many pictures are needed in each category before you can move? Photos. Uh, that's a great question. Um, the absolute minimum, um, and when I say photos, I'm talking about the task list photos. So uh, there's about seven categories of photos ranging from um, interior exterior photos, VIN photo, domber in, domber out. Um, every category aside from the one, which is the optional category, requires at least one photo. But again, as we talked about earlier, more photos the better. You don't expect you to spend an hour taking photos. But if you can quickly take a few photos per category, uh, it shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes, and it really makes, uh, again, the, the, uh, the report at the end a lot more complete. Um, it makes the customer a lot more. Well, yeah, like what we talked about before, what we want to see is four exterior photos, all four corners. We want to see before, during, and after photos of each repair. And we want to see photos of anything that you recommend. Um, 
again, these are all great documentation. It takes a lot less um, need for additional voicemails on that photo notes. Um, and then we'll go from there. I think, it, what about uh, if it's missing a VIN number? Um, that actually goes twofold, because I'm not sure how the app takes that missing VIN number, but I do know that you do have numerous areas on the vehicle. Um, you have a door, you have a windshield. Um, most modern vehicles um, have fenders always are, are numbered. Um, also in the back trunk area, there are number. There is a number of sites online you can go. Uh, if you can go to Google, you can go to Google and you say, VIN, VIN places on my vehicle. And they will come up with, most of the time, show you where, where those VIN places are. But if they don't have a VIN. Yeah, I would say that if the car doesn't have a VIN, um, you might want to call your uh, our op tech operations team um, and talk to one of the operations specialists directly um, so they can figure out the situation. Um, every car should have a VIN, so, um, you know, exactly. Uh, it kind of brings up some red flags if there isn't. Yeah. However, you've always got registration. Yeah, it's about sure the registration. Okay. Um, last question we have is, uh, when are we getting an iOS app? Um, it's a really common question. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have anything in the works at the moment. Um, it does take a lot of engineering resources to, to develop and maintain uh, not just one app, but multiple apps on multiple platforms. Um, we do recognize uh, that it can be a little frustrating having to carry around your normal personal iOS device as well as uh, you know, your mechanic um, Android device specifically for the app. Um, but unfortunately, at this time, um, based on our, our internal resources, uh, we only have enough to, to maintain our Android app. Um, once we do get more resources and we have a plan for our iOS app for mechanics, uh, we'll definitely let you know um, so that you can know, only carry one device. Um, yeah, so that's about uh, all we have for today, all the questions, all our updates. Um, and if you any other questions come up, uh, please feel free to send an email to uh, mechsupport at your mechanic.com. Um, and we did that. Uh, we want free business cards. Night by 5 p.m. Oh, sorry. Let me do that louder. If you want free business cards, by tonight by 5 p.m. Pacific. Send this code to next support at yourmechanic.com. It's going to be YTL100. Again, YTL100. Next support at yourmechanic.com by 5 p.m. Pacific, and we will get you 100 free business cards. Uh, well, for everybody from here from YM, we appreciate your time today, and have a great weekend and uh, profitable next week. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, everyone.